Good morning. So, thoughts on a low GI diet. If you come in and give me a hello, if you're on replay, drop a replay. I'm going to need a, a new light that probably isn't red, aren't I? I'm going to look like a possessed devil every morning. Um, speaking of which, a low GI diet, which is very much misunderstood and um, put on this pedestal, but could be quite an evil way to make people eat a certain way. And it doesn't quite have the evidence um, required. So generally, what is a low glycemic index diet? So GI is essentially refers to glycemic index, which is an index that looks at the rate at which foods spike your blood sugar level or rise, raise your blood sugar level. I should say rather than spike the speed at which. So glucose is 100, for example, if you had to put porridge in there, porridge would be about 40, um, depending on how much milk you use, etc. Um, which obviously slow down the rise in blood sugar because you've had milk with it, which is protein and also potentially fat. And this is the, the issue with it. It's great on paper, you know, lower glycemic index foods tend to be higher fiber, slow digesting, but then you've got to consider that we eat meals, not foods. So yeah, sure, if I eat, I don't know, um, a white potato, it comes up quite high and you're like, oh, it's gonna spike your blood sugar level. You have a tuna in it, tuna mayo in it, some sweet corn, and then it's back low again because the protein in the tuna, the fat potentially in the mayonnaise, sweet corn, the fiber, overall will lower your glycemic index, or load, I should say, glycemic load, which therefore means, what's the benefit? Well, the benefit mainly comes from, um, in diabetes, more so, in certain situations, and I mean certain situations, maybe type 1, especially if you are um, injecting insulin, potentially as well, that will be quite relevant. Um, but in general, yeah, sure, you can learn a lot from it. Like, generally, low glycemic index foods might be um, superior, potentially, um, because you would expect them to be higher in fiber. That's not always the case. For example, a carrot is fairly high glycemic index, and cake is a bit lower because cake is actually made of different foods, right? So it's got fat in it. Fat slows down the spike, if you like, of your blood sugar levels. So therefore, does that mean that if you're following a low glycemic index diet, that um, we should have cake instead of carrots? Of course not. But that's where we have to use a little bit of common sense when it comes to this stuff and go, okay, well, it can be useful in certain situations, but we eat meals, not food. And that's an important thing to consider with that. And actually, glucose spikes in normal individuals with normal metabolisms, if you like, so without um, diabetes, glucose spikes are actually normal. Um, the part we want to be more concerned with is actually the like how long it's raised for. So if it's raised for like, you know, they do oral glucose, oral glucose tolerance tests, which is something that I did in my research study, where you look at over two hours, how long does it take for the glucose levels to come down? And that's a good sign of insulin sensitivity as well. So how sensitive are you to insulin? And this will bring it down over the two hours. Now, this is why we don't really need to get caught up with this stuff it makes nutrition more confusing than it is because then when you when you zoom out and you just go okay what helps me eat less or more well nutrient dense foods lots of fiber lots of vegetables lots of protein that's going to help me keep full up that's going to help my glycemic index if you like glycemic control anyway by default so and we don't want to be shying away from insulin necessarily Insulin has benefits, again, in a normal metabolism. Um, even certain protein, like whey protein, can be insulinogenic, so it can raise your protein levels, which is good. 
uh, raise your insulin level, which can be good because if you've got high, slightly high blood sugar level and you increase your um, insulin production, that will actually lower your glucose levels, um, independent of whether you've e- eaten sugar, which is quite powerful. Anyway, I'm rumbling, rambling a bit here um, in this dark and quite chilly morning, actually. But my point here is, think of the big rock. We eat meals, not foods. Can be relevant, but ultimately what's it saying? Well, let's get lots of good fiber, lots of vegetables. Mediterranean vegetables are great, stir fry veg, frozen veg, keep it handy. Salads, perfect. Soup, stews on their way soon, I'm sure, if you haven't all done so already. And then we can look at the next part in terms of getting protein in at each meal. Again, that's going to lower the glycemic index in many cases um, because you're eating a meal now. And this will then help control your calories, which will have a bigger impact in most people, like I said. But ultimately, we know the hardest part of that is doing it, right? And when it comes to doing it, we need to set realistic intentions with this. This is why this morning we do our accountability challenge. I've done it already. It's going to be a food fitness focus. So for me today, three things today that I'm going to live by, if you like. The food habit, making sure I get protein every meal. If I want a snack in between, protein, uh, snacks, fruit, or veg, done. Nice and simple one. Fitness-wise, I'm walking in now. Busy day of sessions ahead, but I'm still going to get five at least sets of pull-ups in throughout the day, just sporadically, a bit like our one-minute workouts that I do. Um, and then finally, that focus is the bed by 10 o'clock. That's my three things today. Done. So let me know your three things today. We can talk about the glycemic index all day, but ultimately, we pretty much know much of what we need to do already. And if we can do 80% of that, you're going to get results. And that's where that accountability comes in. That's why what we do in the 100 day challenge works so well. So if you have any questions, let me know. Have an awesome day. Make it a great day. Set your, your food, your fitness, your focus. Focus on those big rocks rather than the little ones and worrying about the small, small things. So you can see me now. So I'll say bye-bye. Have an awesome day. See you soon.